Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you and the ranking member for holding this hearing. I know this is uh, particularly important to the chair of the subcommittee because she represents many of the firms that make these drugs and, um, and is also very passionate about finding new cures. Uh, in Houston, we also have a, a very strong biomedical innovation sector and, um, and uh, we're very proud of that. I'm gonna talk about one of my constituents, this, um, that this committee paved the way for her innovation um, with the Cures Act, working on adult stem cells. So Donna Chang um, works on this future of medicine, curing a person's disease with their own stem cells. And she's doing clinical trials with stem cells on Parkinson's, long COVID, and other neurodegenerative diseases. And these are not unsafe treatments. They're not fringe doctors. They're FDA approved trials and procedures that show promise, but they do get stuck in the regulatory framework set up for stem cell therapies. So uh, Dr. Abernathy, if you would indulge me for these questions. Um, stem cell therapies are supposed to be regulated under the RMAP pathway established in cures. For these more advanced treatments, um, specifically what I'm talking about, they, they don't, sometimes don't meet those strict requirements set by the RMAP pathway and therefore are regulated as a drug through that pathway. So stem cells are part of a person's body. Could they be regulated in the same way as we regulate other autonomous bodily tissue? Thank you very much, Mr. Crenshaw. Interesting question. And certainly we are all looking for better ways to take care of patients and to personalize. I don't really have an opinion as to whether or not they can be regulated uh, outside of their current pathway. Um, and practically speaking, I do think regulatory innovation is going to import, be important across this space. Do you think the RMAP pathway could be amended to broaden the number of stem cell therapies that can be safely approved? I honestly have not explored this specific question, so I don't know the answer to that question. Yes or no. Um, do you think we need to act on that as a Congress to design new drug pathways for stem cell therapies? It seems like this is an important question to this committee, so this is an important time to, to look in detail. So, Mesim, oh boy, here we go. Mesim Kalmel stem cells are more and more commonly extracted from adipose tissue. Okay, so we're talking about just taking stem cells from fat, all right? That's, can we just be, <laughs> let's, let's have a normal conversation. Unfortunately, the FDA's rule that the stem cells taken from fat tissue just don't pass the muster of the definition of minim minimally manipulated. And in my conversations with the FDA, I learned that their hesitance on adipose tissue stem cells, it doesn't come from a safety concern, but a lack of knowledge on this tissue. They don't know how the process of removing the adipose tissue changes the function of the stem cells. Uh, and so maybe you still can't answer it, but uh, maybe you can shed some light since you spent some time at the FDA. I mean, short of writing a bill that tells the FDA how to interpret what minimally manipulated means, what can Congress do to help close their knowledge gap on stem cells derived from adipose tissue? So again, this is not an area where I can specifically comment um, with discrete knowledge. I think your question about what can Congress do to help FDA in these areas is an important one. Critically, there are often areas where there's evolving science and FDA needs the opportunity to have the personnel. So essentially the scientists at FDA have the scientific dialogue, so for, ex for example, together with the National Academy of Medicine and others, and also the opportunity to update a regulatory pathways as needed. And, and so as Congress, there's the opportunity to make sure that the FDA has the right resourcing and also uh, the right sense of urgency to, to solve these problems. And you know, based on your answers, it seems like we do need to tell the FDA. Uh, what to do, and, and I think maybe that's the point I want to make here, and I think there could be some great bipartisan work to get really cutting edge, effective treatments to people that right now are just uh, tied up in a web of, of, of paralysis by analysis at the FDA. And ironically, um, some of these treatments are, are potential, potential treatments for paralysis. Uh, we've actually seen some really interesting case studies uh, from, from this particular um, biomedical research firm that I was talking about. So uh, I hope that that's something this committee can work on, and I yield back.